underneath you. Hope that you'll look on with us. The Word of God is the only uh, supernatural thing in the room. And uh, we want to change people. And that's what to do it was the Word. It will change your life if you'll let it. And so we wanted to do that. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We've been preaching just a mini series on First Thessalonians 5 about holy living and uh, things that God would have us to do uh, to be holy people. And holy people doesn't mean you're some weirdo that, that acts quiet and weird and, and says God bless you all the time. Holiness is being separated unto God, consecrated to him for him. Set aside for him. And, and we've been preaching through this, and it's been a great series. And, and we, we're preaching kind of some precepts for holy living or, or things that holy people will do if God has their attention. And, and, and we, we, we said that uh, back in verse 6, with, it says, Therefore let us not sleep, that we couldn't be lax. We don't need to have no laxation. Don't need to be lax. We need to get after it. And, and, and we cannot sleep and we, as others. And, and let us watch and be sober. And, and, and God doesn't want us to sit back and deviate. And so he said there would be no deviation like others. And, and, and no observ- we need to observe observation. Watch. And, and, and that's what God would have holy people do, man. We're, we're trying to live for the Lord. And it's important that we do that. And, and, and he says, be sober. Don't be intoxicated with the world. You understand that? Uh, be, not, be not drunk with wine where there's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And that's what God wants us. If we're filled with the Spirit, we cannot be filled with the world. Uh, you, you, when we see drunk people, we know they're drunk. We're like, man, they are under the influence. They are intoxicated. Well, people ought to see something in us because we're filled with the Spirit. They ought to say, man. That person is filled with God without even have saying a word. And so don't be intoxicated with the world and, 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 and look into what God wants you to do. And, and then we said in verse number 9 through 9 and 10, motivation. Uh, uh, God had not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. That ought to motivate us. Man, God, didn't, God is going to take us out of here one day. And that's motivation. We're leaving one day. And it should motivate us to live for a holy life for him. And then consolation, it says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. We're a church. Holy people comfort each other and love each other and help each other. And and then edify one another. We build each other up. Edification. And and, and know them which your labor among you. That's education. We ought to... We ought to know your pastor and man, Brother Paul and the, the ones that are, are really wanting the best for you. We, we, we're not here to, to have church. We're here to affect lives and to lead people to the Savior. And, and God wants us to, to do just that, lead people to Jesus and, and to live a life that would be, be gratifying to Him that He'd like. And then uh, last week we said in verse 13, conciliation, be at peace among yourselves. God doesn't want to fight in church. You understand that? I'm going through them very quickly. And then warn the unruly, remonstration, warn them. Man, we are to be telling the world about Jesus and that he's coming back and Jesus is holy. You say, well, I don't think we ought to offend anybody. That's exactly what happened to the whole world. Church sat down to stop telling people the truth and thought we'd just sit back and do nothing. And everything is going plumb crazy. And now you talk about Jesus. You understand uh, downtown every Sunday this, mo- this month, they're going to be having a parade down there. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a homosexual parade. I'm not against homosexuals. I'm against the sin of homosexuality. And, and you understand in Philadelphia to give out a gospel track in that parade, it is a hate crime on their books. You will go to jail for a hate crime like you've hated somebody. Only a gospel track, Jesus. Go down there and give you proselyte for Muslims and Buddha and all that. But you give out this and you go to jail in Philadelphia and women have gone there. And we're still supposed to, we're not, I'm, saying, I'm not saying we go down there and warn them, but we ought to be warning people. You understand that? And so uh, stimulation, comfort the feeble-minded. Man, we're to help everybody in here. We are to help people. There are weaker Christians in here and there are stronger Christians in here. And then there may be some people in here that aren't Christians. We comfort them and be patient towards all men. Verse 14. And I want to pick right up in verse number 15 tonight. So let's look at it. We're going to read it. And, uh, and, and we'll preach to you just for a little bit tonight about the holy living. 
And I, I, I kind of titled this a little bit different. I, I titled this one, Stop Grumbling and Start Rejoicing. Stop Grumbling and Start Rejoicing. Verse number 15, the Bible says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. I'm going to preach that to you tonight. Stop grumbling and start rejoicing just for a little bit. And I want to help our church. And, and listen to me, folks. Doesn't everybody want to please the Lord? I mean, when, when we want to please Him and, and be for Him and with more than just our lips, the Bible says, Matthew and most of the Gospels say that they had lip service. They, they, they loved them with their lips, but their hearts were far from them. And I know that's not the case here. We're not far from him. But we want to line up completely with him, not just a little bit. And, and that's the Christian life. That's what Christian means, Christ-like. And I, I think we can do that. And I want you to see just a couple of things tonight. And I want to help you. And it's a pretty strong message. Uh, but, but it is something we need. I want you to see it tonight. I want God to help you right from the, right from the Scripture. And right from the scriptures. And it would be a good message for us tonight. Stop grumbling and start rejoicing. You say, well, Pastor, you always say how great a church we got and how we have no problems in here. I do say that. And I believe we have a great church. But we do have a lot of problems. And they're all sitting right in front of our faces tonight, right under our noses. That's our problems. That's my problem. One of my biggest problems. But Paul knows me. That's one of my biggest problems is this thing gets going before I can get this thing to think it all out. And tonight we need the Lord. He'll help us. Okay, everybody okay? You guys already look like it. I'm beat you down. I ain't even started preaching. We're going to be okay. going to be good. Let's pray. We'll have a song. Father, we love you. And Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Please bless it tonight, Father. Empty me of myself. Fill me with your spirit. May you be the king of my life. And may you go in and out of the pews tonight and help each one of us in the areas we need it. Father, thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that, that, that strengthened us and saved us and, and helped us and wants to save everybody. And, and Lord, thank you that we could put our faith and trust in you. And, and Lord, but it wasn't finished there we, we've been talking a lot about mortifying our members in Colossians on Sunday mornings and, and Lord, the evil communications and different things, Lord. And, and so, God, tonight we need you just to keep helping us, touch us, help us to be different, help us to be different from the world, help us not to be what we used to be, help us to be new people for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you can be seated. Thank you for standing.
the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall be sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. job guys I asked them last night if they want, wanted to sing and they said yeah we'll sing I thought that, that was good just turn this one off if you don't mind moving Paul It'll be fine I'll put that right there for your amens <laughs> met a guy named Ito last night in the park uh, and had a good talk with him praying that he'll come to church I told him I'd have our church family pray over him, having a lot of uh, things going wrong in his life with uh, just a lot, lot of things going on. And, uh, and let's all make sure we pray for him. E-T-O, that's his name. Uh, and um, uh, the friend that was with him, his name was Kiki, uh, which was interesting. But his, uh, he, uh, he said he came to this church before when uh, Carlos's brother died, uh, Sachi. Uh, and he said, I've been in here before. And, and so they're both supposed to come Sunday morning. And then uh, brother, brother, our brother Ito uh, worked for a man named Joe before the, the tow truck. He came over and towed our van out the other day, uh, just yesterday. The, the, uh, the white handicap van, we're getting that fixed right now. And I went to Joe and I said, Joe, I got some money down at the church. How much do I owe you? Because we had talked about 50 bucks or something. And he goes, you don't owe me anything, Pastor. I'm not going to take your money. And I said, Joe, take my money because I'm going to probably call you again one day, and I don't want to, I'd like for you to take our money. And he goes, just call, don't call me early. That's what he said. I said, okay. And so that was a blessing. And so I, uh, I talked to the guy that's fixing the vehicle, which Mike took us up with this guy named Ozzy. Uh, now, all three of these people, I believe, are lost completely. Uh, and I talked to Ozzy, and uh, I, Ozzy had come over and looked at our buses several months ago. There was something wrong with the white one. We couldn't get it to start. And Ozzy came over and looked at it and did some stuff for me. It wouldn't take any money. And so I, I took him pierogies. Uh, Brother Mike said he liked pierogies, so I took him some pierogies. So Ozzy called me today and says, Joe's not charging you for the tow. And I already knew that. And he said, so you need to take him some pierogies. And I said, oh, yeah, no, I've got it all lined out with him, Ozzy. He's coming to eat roast pork with us here at our church on Sunday. He goes, all right, I'm going to tell him we're both going. And so that would be really nice if they all came. Uh, and and that's, that's the motivation is, is to get people to the Lord. And, uh, and, and we need people to be in the Lord. And, and really, church is not a place where we act funky and nobody knows what's going on. Everybody's confused. We've learned that. We may have thought that before. Uh, before we got into a real church, uh, but it's not, and God wants to work on us. So if you'll pray for those folks, that will be a blessing, and we need to see them come to church and many other visitors, and I've been uh, texting and calling people. Am I just kind of out of control up here? Is it this one? or uh, We've been texting and calling people. I'm going to take this one off, Brother Paul, and just go to that other deal. that we hurt, we're going to take up an offering to fix them. They're, they're about $400 each, so to, if I throw one, try to catch it, because that was dumb of me to even throw it. And, and once it hits, I'm going to be like, oh, why would I throw it? Hey, Amen. So pray about that. Hey, uh, give me just a quick story. The Bible says there in verse number, uh, verse number 15, see that you render evil for evil, render none evil, I'm sorry, see that none Render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. I said earlier that the biggest problem we have is right under our nose. Uh, the Bible says the, the tongue is a world of iniquity. It, it set the whole world 
uh, I forgot the exact words. It, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it's the course of hell is, comes from the tongue. Anything evil that's ever transpired on the face of this earth started with this tongue. And, and I'm not here to preach on the tongue, but I am a little bit. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, we have to be careful what we say. Uh, today I got in my car to take Kara down to the hospital for a visit. And my kids are in the back. And I'm, I'm wanting to walk with the Lord. And, and um, the, my kids have gotten to where they all have their own personalities. And they want to tell the, everybody else no on everything. You know, they, they like to get in the back of the car and sing. We all, they always sing. And so Amelia wanted to sing uh, the conversation. And Dale said, I'm not singing it. And Amelia can't get, why not, please? And he's just being mean to him. And I turn around and said, Dale, you're just doing that to be mean. Stop being mean. And before you knew it, man, I was mad. And I'm like, everybody just be quiet back there. I'm tired of this. All you're doing is being mean to each other. And Amelia, I turned over to drive the car, and I thought, what is wrong with me? My mouth got carried away. So then I said, all right. Guys, Daddy just made a big mistake, and I shouldn't have gotten so upset about that. And I'm sorry, Dale, but would you guys please just get along? And I wanted to fix that very quickly. Now, my pride didn't want to. My pride wanted to say, the little suckers need to get right and stop acting stupid back there. But I was glad I didn't drive all the way down because it was a, a bad spirit was in our car at that point, I believe. And I thought, man, this is nastiness, and I don't want that to happen. And... I'll say this, if you want to be right with the Lord, and I hope that everybody does, I can't make you want to be right with the Lord, but I can tell you this, if you're acting like I did, you're not right with the Lord, because you're rendering evil for evil. Dale was being, you say he's being evil, it is evil. To just be mean and say no to someone for no reason. For absolutely no reason. So that's how brothers and sisters are. It's not how mine are going to be. We're not going to look at that and say that's just how they do it. Let them work it out themselves. No, we're going to work it out. Cause we're going to teach them all along the way. And, uh, and, 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 and so, you know, if you want to live a holy life for the Lord, you've got to be right with him at all times. And to be right with God at all times is, is, is a life of obedience. We preached on that a couple of weeks ago on John chapter number 15. The key to the whole thing is being obedient to God. Now, I'm not here to make anybody feel bad. But I'm, I am saying if you're not living an obedient life for the Lord, man, you're not right with God. And this, this here isn't the Houston Astrodome with Joel Osteen teaching anybody. Saying as long as you give, everything's okay. This is the church of the living God, a New Testament Baptist church right out of the Bible. And, and we've got to be careful. And, and it says, see that you, see that none render evil for evil. And so number one, this is called retaliation. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about it. Retaliation is defended vigorously in our communities. And in our, the society we live in, if they get you, you get them. If they talk bad about you, then you don't give in and you talk bad about them. And let me say this, that was never God. The Christians were some of the first people on the face of the earth when Paul was writing these letters. Christians were very, they're relatively a new thing. And the world was used to dog eat dog. These emperors, these these uh, uh, the commanders in these Roman armies, and these people that were in elevated in in workplaces, they were always mean to people, just nastiness. And Christians were some of the first ones to ever come onto the scene that weren't going to be nasty. And so Paul is not teaching them something they already knew they may not have known that they're not supposed to render evil for evil but we as a society in our country this country was raised up on judeo christian principles everything has really come out of the bible on how we are to treat people and before you got saved you already knew one to others as others do unto you treat somebody like you want to be treated that comes out of the Bible. 
And, and so these folks had an excuse. They didn't really know. And Paul was looking to a great church, the Thessalonian church, and saying, listen, you guys make sure you don't act like the old person because we're new now and will not render evil for evil. He said, well, Brother Burton, you just don't know how that person is treating me. Really, I don't care how that person is treating you. Are you Christ-like? Do you want to please the Lord? Or are you so stuck in your pride and your, your nastiness and your worldly influence that you cannot concede and let them have their way and you just be a Christ-like person? Because sometimes we think, well, they did it to me and I'll do it back to them. That's not the way. That is not the way of Christ. And the Thessalonian church was getting taught a great, great, story and a great great principle here not to render evil unto anybody and I know with if someone talks bad to me I want to talk bad back to them that's my flesh and that's the way we're built but we're supposed to be filled with Christ likeness uh, I, I wrote some things down and I was going to state them later but I, I want to go ahead and let you know this we're, we're supposed to render no evil because Jesus didn't render evil for evil. That's what the whole passage is talking about. Because he's coming back one day, we're to live a holy life like he did. And, and, and when I wrote this down, listen, J Jesus loved Judas as much as he loved John. And, and Jesus loved Annas, Annas as much as he loved Andrew. And he loved Pilate as much as he loved Peter. And he loved the man who spit in his face as much as he loved the woman who washed his feet with tears. And he loved the dying thief on the cross who cussed him as much as he loved the one that he took to paradise with him. He didn't render evil to anybody. And he ever followed that which was good towards all men. Well, pastor, we're not like him. Well, this passage is telling us to be like him. And I can't do what Jesus did. Well, I, I said it in that song, and I forgot the words that I, that I stopped and read that song. But if you'd be totally sold out to God, and God would be filled inside of you, then you would act just like Jesus. So that's impossible. Not impossible. Very, very possible according to the New Testament, lest the New Testament is a lie. Crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Uh, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is uh, was what God wants me to be. And, 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 and so, so I can't act like Jesus. You can if you'll let him have all of you. And that's what the passage is talking about. And, and, and folks, listen to me. People in this room talking bad about other people in this room, man, get your heart right. Do not do that. And, and, and I'm not saying who, who, boy, what's happening or if it's happening, but I know it's happening. Because every time I think it's not happening, someone tells me it's happening. And, and, and that's not who we're supposed to be. And, and, and listen, well, you don't know what they did to me. Who cares? Who do you think you are? I mean, who cares who you, what, what do you think, you're somebody? We're nobodies. He's somebody. And, and God wants us to, to live for him. Take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter number, uh, chapter number 12 real quick. I want to help you tonight because, listen to me, Christians are different. We're supposed to be different types of people. And this slander and, and, and talking about people and not liking people, man, how dare you talk about one of God's children like that? You say, well, they're messed up. Well, so are you, and you're even worse than them because you're acting back at them how they've acted to you. And it's even worse on your end. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not the high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Now look at this next part of this passage. Be not wise in your own conceits. Don't think that you know what you're doing if it goes across the word of God. 
recompense, recompense to no man evil for evil. So evil is a big word, Brother Purton, and that means that evil, I'm not evil because I talk about uh, talking bad about somebody or talking about somebody is evil. E V I L O. Evil. It's wrong. Re re recompense to no man evil for evil. To no man evil for evil. Don't do it. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. Not what lies in them, what lies in you. Live peaceably with all men. See that none render evil for evil. Because that's the world's way. And we can pride ourselves, man, I'm an independent fundamental Baptist. I love the Lord. I'm separated unto him. I, 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 I dress right. I talk right. I look right. I, I, I'm in church all the time. I'm a soul winner. I, I preach to different people. Uh, I, I, I'm this. I'm that. I'm that. But all that's no good once I start saying, I can't believe they even look like that. I can't believe they got nerve to be here. They're saying, and start talking about other people. And that's evil. And then you bring someone else into it and start messing their mind up because they're your friends and you think you're supposed to vent to your friends about another person. You're not. You're supposed to make that right. So I can't go right over there and make that right with them because they're not going to want to hear it. So there you are again thinking that you're somebody that you're not. So what? You make it right. So, Brother Burton, do you struggle with that? I struggle with it too, but I do it. I do it every time. I may battle with I battle with it in here sometimes, some of y'all. I know they don't like me, no, they're mad. But I got to go over there. I can't hide from them. I got to go over there. Hey, I love you. I'm sorry. Let's be right. Hey, see that none render evil for evil. Hey, that's with your mouth, that's with your eyes, that's with your thoughts. I mean, that, we talked a lot about it last week, or, and then in and, and Colossians, we've been talking about being holy and be, having real faith. Hey, a real faith, that's somebody that doesn't talk about others. That's somebody that gets their hearts right. Don't pretend like you're right with the God and you talk about people. And don't come up act like you're something and, and you want to please the Lord if you don't want to please the Lord. Because pleasing the Lord is important. Turn to 1 Peter, chapter number 3, real quick. But, Burton, you sound like got something going on. Well, no, this is just the passage we were in, the verse we were at. 1 Peter, chapter number 3. But, but I do believe God's right on time every time, all the time. Amen. That's okay. I tell y'all right now, everybody in this room needs this message right now. All of you. Everybody. Finally, or 1 Peter 3, verse number 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of the ones you like. No, that's not what it says. One of another. Love as brethren. This is the verse that tore me up last week. I told you about be pitiful. Brother Bobby, I told our I told Brother Paul for years. Some some I, I don't want to get rough in here, but uh, sometimes men don't want to be men. I tell Brother Paul, I don't I don't I'm not gonna pity a man. They need to be a man or, or suck it up and be a man. Then I read this verse last week. It says, be pitiful. I thought, and I ain't been pitiful. I've been telling them to get their heart right and get be be a man. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil. Wait a minute, Peter wrote it too? Yeah, Peter spent time with Jesus, who never rendered evil for evil. Peter cut the guy's ear off when they took Jesus. Jesus said, no, we don't, they didn't live by the sword, die by the sword. We're not like that, Peter. Put, this, put it back in your sheath. And, 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 and Jesus didn't render evil, nor not render 
doing evil for evil or railing for railing. You know what that word railing means in the original language? Bitter or abusive language. Hmm. Have you ever said anything bitter or abusive about someone else? Some of you just recently. I mean, we, 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 I told you about me and my son this morning. I fight the same battles you fight. But I thank God that God smotes my heart immediately and that I am close enough to him that every time I blow it up, he comes and says, Burton. And I say, you're right, God. I didn't drive downtown and get right with him. I got right within a minute probably. All right, hold on, guys. Daddy messed that up. Dale, it isn't that big a deal, but be nice to these girls. Hey, railing for railing. Well, they're bitter at me. Then you're a saved person, but you're not a Christian. I want to be a Christian. I want to be filled with him. And I want to do what he would do. And, and that's what the whole passage is really about. But counterwise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto cold, that you should inherit a blessing. Because you're going to inherit a blessing from God, why don't you, instead of railing on them, instead of being bitter on them, and giving evil for evil unto them, why don't you just be a big blessing to them? Well, Brother Burton, I can't do that. Then you're just saved. And you're stuck up in pride, and you're not going anywhere till you've passed the test. Because, folks, listen to me. This test will be there until you pass it. You can, you, and I don't have to worry about this with anybody here, but you can change church. You can move to another country. You can go somewhere else. But that same person will pop up in your life, and you will be bitter and rail on them and not be a blessing to them. And you cannot be right with the Lord or be a holy person without it. It's just the way it is. Brother Josh, we've been talking. Brother Josh is the one that did all this for us. Brother Josh has been a blessing our calendars and different things. And, and, and Brother Josh, we've been talking about real faith and about being filled with the Spirit a lot, man, here. I mean, God got a hold of us. Man, I don't want to render evil for evil. My spirit doesn't. My flesh does. My flesh says... Man, I've had people talk bad to me, and I'm thinking, Psh. man, I don't even have to say nothing. I'm just thinking. But my spirit says, hey, I'm sorry. So, but what if you're not wrong? I've apologized, I've apologized to half the people in this room when I wasn't wrong. <laughs> he said, well, you just blew it on that one, Brother Burton. I'm just telling you, man, I've apologized to people when I'm not wrong. But I'm not right with God, and I'm bitter, and I'm upset, and I'm, things aren't right, and I just go to him, and I'm sorry. And, 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 and so, you know, don't let someone else determine how you act by having bitter words and rendering evil to them. Verse 10, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. See, sometimes we look at these verses and think, well, he's talking about all the people that ain't saved. No, he's not. He's talking to them with the lips, evil lips, evil hearts. And, and folks, I'm telling you, Philippians 2, 14 and 15, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Do all things without murmurings. That, that, that's okay for you, uh, 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 ma'am, you and your husband. You murmur and dispute, not right with God. Can't be. He says, do all things. Young people, your mamas, your daddies, uh, the, the way you treat them, not right with God. 
I'm at a point in my life where I want to be totally right with him as much as possible. They may be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as the lights of the world. We said this, Matthew 5, 37, let your communication be yea and yea and nay and nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay, for whatsoever cometh of these is evil. More of these is evil. So, wait a minute. Not telling the truth is evil? Absolutely evil. And all I'm saying tonight, folks, is make sure you're right with people. Especially the household of God. So I don't think that they're they're very good Christians. Well, just the fact that you said that, I don't think you're a very good Christian either. And you can be a soul winner, and you can be a tither, and you can be a worker, and you can be here all the time. You can live in the place I mean, and not be a very good Christian. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. When you talk, you're supposed to minister grace unto the people who are listening. Uh, I don't really like this person. Da, 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 da. Oh, that was good. You ministered grace unto me when you told me that. No, you didn't. Matter of fact, you're a busybody. You're talking behind people out there about their back, and, and you're not right with God. And it's wrong. It, it is what it is. The Lord is over all. Colossians 3, 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy communication out of your mouth. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, we need to get right with the Lord with ourselves and make sure we're right with everybody. And, and some folks in here need to go to some people in the church and fix this stuff. Because it, it's, it's bad, some of this stuff I'm hearing. It's bad. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm just disappointed at the whole thing. And God's disappointed in it. And if you don't do that, you're just stuck up and prideful. And you're just a fake. Now, if you're visiting with us, we sure love you and are glad you're here tonight. And uh, we're very, very sweet people. But you came on Thursday night, and, man, most of these folks aren't visiting. But this is good for anybody. And we want to tell the truth. We want to be good to people. Love them that persecute you. That's what God says. I'm, as far as I know, ain't nobody in here persecuting anybody in the church. So if, we can't, so we, if we're supposed to love the people that persecute us, we, we can definitely love the ones that don't like us. Some people in here don't like each other. Man, that's sad. And, and that ticks me off. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure all this out real quick here as a, as, a, as, a, as a church is supposed to if it doesn't get right. Are you threatening anybody? Well, whatever it might be. It says follow good. Follow good. See that, you, see that none render evil for evil on any man, but ever follow that which is good. I call that one cultivation. Follow good. Jesus is coming. Act like he act. It's impossible to act like him. It's not impossible if you're filled with him. That's how you follow good, by letting God control you and have all of you. Man, we're, we're regenerated believers. We, we make ourselves available wholly to the God, and, and, and God, the Holy Spirit, helps us to get close to the Lord and it knows what we need before we even ask for it and enables us. And it's a simple fact in Scripture. It's common sense and a daily experience that apart from Christ, it's utterly impossible for even the sincerest born-again believer to live the kind of life that God demands in his own strength. You cannot Folks, you can't react like I want you to react or like the Bible's telling you to react tonight because you're doing it in your strength. 
and and you think you got filled with God in all these areas, but you left one undone, and it's a cancer to you. And you leave that one undone, and then, man, you, you cannot be right. You, you have to make that right so that God can totally fill you. Abide in me, and I in you. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And so we have to, no retaliation. We have to have cultivation. Follow that which is good. Ever. Follow that which is good. What does that mean, ever follow? Always. Both among yourselves, that's in here, and to all men. So they just treat us terrible out there. So what? You're still supposed to try to uh, do right and not render evil for evil. And number three, the good part, everybody's ready for this one, I can see. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. And so that was kind of hard to start rejoicing, Brother Burton. No, it's not, not hard to start rejoicing. You, you, you rejoice when you get filled with the Spirit. That's jubilation. Hey, rejoicing is better than grumbling. Hey, thank God he saved me from my sins. I don't have to pay for my sins. I'm not only going to heaven one day. He's down in my house right now. He's right next to me right now. He's in my car when I get in my car. He's all over my life. He walks with me. He talks with me. He helps me. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I get to rejoice that I've got God. God Almighty, and he's real to me. He's not a figment of my imagination. He's not something somebody told me to believe in, and I believe in it. He's somebody I met. He's somebody I have a personal relationship with. He's somebody that talks to me every single day. He's somebody that corrects me every single day because he wants me to be better, because he wants me to live for him, and I thank God for that, and I can be jubilant for that. And listen, you can sit there and look like bumps on a log all night, but I'll just be excited and happy that I got him, and I ain't wrong nobody in the room, and I ain't got no problems with anybody in my life, and I have jubilation because I can rejoice forevermore, and I can be exactly what God wants me to be because he is the ruler and leader of my life. So you got a little excited there. He's the ruler and leader of my life, man. I want to get on my face and say, Lord, tell me anything right now, and I'll fix it right now. Anything, I'll fix it right now. Some of us will pray that prayer and get up about a second later and not wait for the answer. But if you'll sit there for about five minutes and say, God, tell me. I mean, you don't even have to start dissecting. The Holy Spirit just comes and says, right here, if you're saved, if you know the Lord, if he's your Savior, if he's not your Savior, you get no conviction. You don't care about anything in here. Nothing bothers you, and it's all about you. And can I tell you, you will go right to a devil's hell that God created for the devil and his angels, not for us. And he died for you, and he paid for your sins, and you ought to give your life to him because he's that important. And we can rejoice and be excited about it. We sing, I want to make much of Jesus. I want to make much of you, Jesus, but I'm a little angry with so-and-so. So then you're not making much of Jesus. You're making a, a little hoo-hoo with Jesus. And much of Jesus is selling out evermore. I looked up that, and in the, in the Greek it says every win. I mean, I thought that's an interesting line. Every win means evermore. Whenever Every time, whatever, that's what that means. At all times, always, evermore. The Thessalonian church, when Paul wrote this, they might have been able to say something like, you know, they were all under persecution at this time. The church wasn't a popular thing. They, people hated the church. We get to thinking these folks had it made in the shade because Jesus was right there, man. It was new, and people hated what was going on. And so they could have said, well, Paul might have it all right, but we don't. Well, think about Paul right in the Philippian church, sitting in jail with Nero about to kill him and chop his head off soon. 
And he was like, rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And, and, and Paul might have said to him, look at my back and tell me I've got it easy. Paul was whooped and, and, and stoned and, and shipwrecked and, 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 and just he went through it bad, bad, bad. And he's the one telling them, rejoice evermore. We've not been through anything like that. And we've got a great Savior and a great God, man. He paid a great price for us, and he came and got us where we were, and he didn't want to. He, we didn't have to change one thing except our mind to have him. I mean, you're just going to take an old drug at it. Yeah, okay. Well, I want it, Lord. I want it. Hey, that's a pretty good thing to rejoice about. I'm not going to hell. I've got heaven on earth. Got, got benefits that are just, that outweigh everything that's bad. I mean, everybody in here, I know most of you enough to show you all the benefits in your life right now that would show you that you have a pretty good life. And we testify about it often. We'll probably testify about Sunday if we come back after this message. Hey, a praising person is a prevailing person. Enemy can't say nothing about a person that's just excited and happy. Folks, we just got to put ourselves down. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good of both among yourselves to all men. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice. When's the last time you rejoiced? I mean, we see we, everybody puts their game face on when they come to church. Rejoice at home. When you open up that, that gas bill that's just like high. Oh, my goodness, we're, we're never going to make it. Seem to make it every time. I don't know anybody sitting in the dark in here tonight. Rejoice over everything. Man, you've got a family. So I don't have a family. you got one sitting right here. We love every one of you. You got, I mean, we got AC. We got a pig. We got people we can count upon. Man, let's stop being little people and be big in the Lord and, and not render evil for evil. Be careful with that because that, that will hang you. Bitterness is like making poison and for the person you hate and drinking it yourself. Man, that will, that will trap you. That will hold you down. That will make you, that will dry. The Bible says it dries your bones. Bitterness drieth the bones. So I have been feeling a little bit tight lately. If the Bible is correct. I don't care what a doctor would tell you. It dries your bones. So you believe that over a physician? Absolutely. Absolutely believe that God knew what he was talking about. The Bible says that the world is a sphere before, while Christopher Columbus thought it was flat and he was going to drive off of it. And the Bible told us it was round a long time ago. The Bible tells us everything. Hey, tonight I just want to ask you, are you bitter? Are you rendering evil for evil? You need to get to the altar. Now, tonight nobody's going to come to the altar, but, but that's okay. But you ought to. And you ought to go to the person if it's in this church, and you ought to get right with that person. Get yourself, well, what if they don't want to get right with me? You're not doing it just for them. You're doing it for yourself and for the Lord and for them. And if they don't like it, that's okay. Or you ought to get on the phone, whatever it might be. I mean, you got problems, you got problems. Don't be at work talking about people. Don't be here talking about anybody. I, I'm, I'm up to here with listening to people talk about people in this church. Stay your tail at home if you can't come here and not talk about somebody or get on the phone with them. It's not right. We want a church. We don't want a worldly church. Now, if you're visiting with us, I love you very much, and I'm so glad you came to church tonight. We're just glad to have you. Hey, folks, listen to me. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for our life so that we could live for him. And he gives us the opportunity to be saved. When we didn't, couldn't get to him, he came to us. And he, he laid down his life for evil people. The ones that spit on him, he died for them. He came to, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what he said. And tonight, we can put our faith and trust in Jesus if we don't know him. 
If he's not your Savior tonight, he loves you and died for you. And he was buried and he rose again on the third day. That's the good news of the gospel. And, and he wants to be your Savior and your King, and he wants to be the leader of your life. And you've got to start somewhere. Emily got saved on a message years ago about getting to first base with salvation. Remember that message? The first thing you got to do with your life is you got to get saved. And then second base was, was service or sanctification or something, but first base is what we got to travel around. And if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, you need to get there. And then maybe tonight, second base needs to be getting right with the Lord if, we, if we're not. If we're not right with the Lord, we need to be right with Him. If we're bitter against anybody on the face of this earth, if they're not here, you better get right with the Lord. And if they know you're bitter at them, you better call them up and make that right. It don't go away by just talking to God when it's a public sin and someone else knows about it and they know about it. Now, if you got someone that you just don't like and they have no clue, you get right with the God and leave them alone. But I'm just telling you tonight, that's the only way to work. See that none render evil for evil. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed and eyes closed. That was a strong message, but I promise you, folks, this is the message God wanted us to hear. And tonight, with heads bowed.